Hey friends, spring break is coming and whether you've booked a trip already or you're feeling a little hesitant or even if you're not ready to book a trip yet, this episode is for you. Hey food allergy mama, if you're here, you've likely experienced the scary and lonely food allergy diagnosis with your child. Unfortunately, food allergy parents aren't taught how to navigate the food allergy lifestyle, and it's easy to feel alone and discouraged sometimes. But I'm here to show you that food allergy life it doesn't have to feel restrictive, scary, or isolated. I'm Karina, and I'm a 17-year food allergy mom and food allergy coach at Friendly Pantry Consulting. I specialize in making food allergy life safer and less worrisome for food allergy families like yours. I'm not perfect, but over 17 years, I've learned a lot the hard way, and I'm sharing the secrets and resources you won't hear anywhere else that will help you feel confident living with food allergies faster and easier than I did. From introducing allergens, travel, navigating school, and educating friends and family, this podcast will give you the essential tips and strategies you need to help your food allergy child and and family thrive. Welcome to the show. Okay, so before we get started here, I just want to let you know that you are in good hands. And I want to let you know where this um, is coming from and how I actually know about food allergy travel. So we have done a lot of travel as a family. Um, For 16 years, we've gone all over to places like the Bahamas, Mexico, Spain, Ireland, the UK. We've been to Italy, France, and all over the US and Canada. We've been on several Disney vacations, including Disneyland several times, Disney World several times, and even Paris Disney. We've done road trips as well as beach vacations, tours, a river cruise, and a Mediterranean cruise. You can see that we have done a lot. So this isn't just coming from um, limited travel experience. What I teach in this podcast is going to be from our experience doing all sorts of travel all over the world. I know that all-inclusive resorts are super popular with food allergy families as well as regular families, and I think there's a couple of reasons for this. Maybe you feel like you want a vacation from cooking, and if you can find an allergy-friendly all-inclusive, it seems like that is the best bet. And another reason is that all-inclusives usually cater to families, so there's lots to do for everyone. And it seems kind of easier than getting your own place with the kitchen, but with food allergies, this can be a little bit of a myth, and we're gonna talk about more of that later. So those are the draws of an all-inclusive, but are there any downfalls, especially for people with food allergies? And I think there are a couple. First of all, you're putting all of your eggs in one basket since you're trusting that resort for the whole time that you're away. And if you get a recommendation from another family or a blog or an Instagram post, that's amazing and it's really helpful when you're planning a trip, but I want to remind you that things can change at any time. So maybe there's a new manager who doesn't make food allergies a priority, or maybe the resort is going through changes and they change their policies. Unfortunately, there's no guarantees when it comes to recommendations. So for example, when we went to France a couple of years ago, I did some research and yes, this wasn't an all-inclusive, but it was um, getting some recommendations for restaurants while we were there. And it was surprising how many of the recommended restaurants weren't even around anymore. And the other thing is that the person who gives you the recommendation in the first place they may not be at the same place as you when it comes to food allergies. So do they take the same precautions as you? Did they check for cross contact? It's almost like you need to ask them how they manage food allergies before you know if a recommendation from them is going to work for your family. Now, full disclosure here, we I don't think we have ever actually stayed at an all-inclusive resort as a family. Usually what we do is get a place with a kitchen, and then we're going to research one to two restaurants nearby so that we can make our own food, but also have a few nights out every once in a while. And I really find that this is a nice balance, especially with food allergies. Because you better believe that even though when we get a place with a kitchen, I still do not want to be in the kitchen the whole time. So over the years, I've come up with a few key strategies to make cooking not only safer for food allergies while we're away, but also easier and less time consuming too. And I've discovered you don't have to feel like you need a vacation from the vacation afterward if you do it right. And dare I say that what I have come up with 
has even made vacations more fun and less stressful and they cost less. So I come back feeling like I've been on vacation without worrying about putting all my eggs in one basket at an all-inclusive. And with these strategies, I don't feel like I actually need to have an all-inclusive vacation to get that break from the kitchen. So all that being said, I'm going to help you find the best all-inclusives for food allergies. But before we talk about that, let's talk about a few other things you're going to have to think about before your trip. Now, I think that sometimes people think that if they go to an all-inclusive, they're going to be able to relax when it comes to food allergies. And yes, that may be the case if you really do find a good resort that knows how to handle allergies well. But even if the resort is amazing with food allergies, there's still other essential strategies that are going to help make a trip smoother, safer, and less stressful in general. So if this is your first trip with food allergies, or even if you're already taking a few trips, I have a few things to think about that you actually may have missed before. The first one is to acknowledge your fears. And what do I mean by this? I think a lot of people who are new to food allergy travel don't realize that traveling with food allergies is more than just finding allergy-friendly destinations, accommodations, and safe restaurants. In order to have a great vacation, your mind is going to need to be in the right place. Whether you realize it or not, your mindset and thoughts are really, really important when it comes to food allergy travel. Having your mindset in the right place is going to allow you to think on your feet when plans change so you can actually enjoy your vacation instead of stressing the whole time. So I remember when we were about to go on our first trip overseas, I think it was maybe to Spain or Ireland, I can't quite remember, but we had researched and planned it all out. But a week before, I was a mess. I wanted to cancel the trip. I actually asked my husband, are we doing the right thing? Because my mom guilt was feeling guilty for taking that unnecessary risk of travel. Thank goodness my husband calmed me down because those trips were both amazing and we would have missed out on so much. I tell you this so that you know that those feelings of fear, doubt, and guilt are real and they're going to happen likely at some point during the trip. In this case, I had the feeling before the trip started and it almost caused us to miss out on the experience entirely. But these feelings, they can pop up at any time and cause stress, especially if things don't go as planned, like a delay in travel, because that's when things can just spiral into stress, which really make your trip go downhill fast. Because a trip filled with stress and worry is not a great memory or bonding experience at all. So it's important to truly overcome that fear of traveling with food allergies before planning or going on any trip so you can make that vacation safer, but also so you can fully experience this vacation that you paid a lot for. Number two is to not overlook the small things. And as I already mentioned, food allergy travel is more than just finding all those allergy-friendly destinations, accommodations, and safe restaurants. There's a lot of smaller things that you're going to need to face too. And a few examples are how you're going to get there, like traveling on a plane, how to eat safely on those travel days, what to pack, where to find safe food when you're on an excursion and away from your accommodations. Also, definitely consider those flight delays or emergencies that could come up, which is bound to happen at some point. You may not think of these things right away, but they are inevitable and it's essential to be ready and just consider your options so that you can confidently decide on this the plan of action at the time instead of being completely stressed and having to figure it all out. And the third thing to consider is your future trips. So consider if you want to take another vacation or even a weekend trip. Are you going to go on the same vacation to the same all-inclusive resort every single time? If you know how to research and plan vacations well, you're going to have the freedom to decide what works for your family for every trip you take, not just one vacation. So here are a few general food allergy travel skills that I recommend every family figures out before any vacation or trip because these skills are going to help get your mind in that right place for the trip. So number one was getting your mindset in the right place so you can confidently navigate whatever comes your way during the trip. From the flight delays to a restaurant that you researched not being safe when you get there. 
Getting that mindset in the right place is going to help you make good decisions while also not spiraling into stress and worry that could ruin your trip. Number two is packing the right amount of allergy safe foods. This can be tricky without packing too much and paying for extra luggage on the plane or the cruise or whatever you're going to or too little and feeling like you can't find safe food and feeling worried. So over many trips, I've come up with a worksheet that helps break out every part of the trip so that we can now easily figure out how much food to bring every time. This worksheet also helps us anticipate where we'll be and what types of food we're going to need so that we can be prepared in all the different circumstances. Another skill to learn is flying safely with food allergies. So flying to and from a vacation destination can be challenging and a little scary at times. From booking to walking off the plane, there are several things to think about. And number four, before and after stays. So you're you're staying at an all-inclusive, you're still going to need to navigate a completely strange location. Or if you're going on a cruise, let's say, you're going to need to know the before and after stays, where you're going to stay and how to navigate that area. It is so helpful to be prepared. Another really important part of traveling with food allergies is understanding how to research and vet restaurants. Even if you plan to stay at the resort the whole time, you may need to vet restaurants for your travel days. So don't forget this important skill. So if you feel like you need help with one or all of these food allergy travel skills, definitely check out my food allergy travel workshop. This workshop is going to help you overcome all of these things. I've even included a food allergy planning and packing workbook that's going to help you plan the trip from start to finish so you can feel confident and worry-free during your vacation while also ready for anything that comes your way. And as far as dining out with food allergies, I have a full workshop for that too. Quick tip, if you decide to get my food allergy travel workshop, you can actually get the dining out with food allergies workshop for over 50% off if you buy it at the same time as you buy the travel workshop. I'll post the link to both of these in the comments, but remember, if you want to get both, make sure to take advantage of that amazing deal by adding that dining out workshop on when you buy the travel workshop. Okay, so now that we've gone over all those food allergy travel skills that you're going to need on any vacation, let's talk about those tips for searching for an allergy-friendly all-inclusive. Okay, so the first one is to get recommendations. Yes, go to the blogs, go to the Instagram posts, go to the Facebook groups, get all the recommendations for those allergy-friendly and all-inclusives. But always check your things for yourself for the reasons we already talked about at the beginning. Once you have your recommendations, you can really dig into a few more things that are going to help you decide if this is the right place for you. One thing to consider is how close is that accommodation to hospital access or medical care? How close is within your comfort zone? And which resorts fit into that? Before making any kind of booking, you want to ask to talk to the concierge. You want to ask that concierge who they can talk to about food allergies at the resort. Sometimes they may transfer you to a head chef or a head of staff, or maybe you'll just talk with a concierge. You want to get into some details with them about what, how they deal with food allergies, basically. And this isn't a fully inclusive list, but here are some of the main things you want to ask. And the first one is definitely what are their allergy procedures? How do they navigate cross contact in their kitchens? Do they work on a buffet system or a menu system? And if they work on bus buffets, how are they going to manage the allergies for your child? Will they be able to make a meal for them in the back so there isn't cross contact? And you also want to get a little bit clear on what they're going to actually make for your child when it comes to your child's allergens. So sometimes restaurants lean in on salads or really plain ingredients to accommodate allergies. And I can tell you that it may be fine to have a plain veggie or a salad once or twice, but for a full week or even two, it can really become too much. So you're going to want to ask them some examples of what they're going to serve your child based on their allergies 
So you can decide if that's going to work for your child. And do not forget those all important desserts or treats that are going to be available for your child. Because for us, desserts are an important part of vacation. And it's not that we have to have a huge array of options, but it's really nice to have one to two dessert options that I know are going to be very special for my daughter so that we can all indulge a little without leaving her out or feeling guilty. Those are the things you're going to want to ask before you ever book with a hotel, but there's also a few things you need to do to make sure that everything's going to be all right once you arrive. And this is why I say that all-inclusive may not actually give you the most relaxing experience because yes, they cook for you, but there's still a lot that needs to be done And you need to be active once you get there at every meal. You can't just sit back and not think about allergies at all. For example, when you arrive at the restaurant, you're still going to need to confirm your allergies every time with them. And you're also going to need to confirm that you've received the right meal and talk about all the food allergy things while you're there. Don't expect the restaurants to be perfect just because you've heard they're good. It's important to ask lots of questions and ensure everybody is on the same page every time you dine at a restaurant, whether it's an all-inclusive or not. Okay, so what if after all of this research, you can't find an all-inclusive that works for your family? I want you to know that there are other ways to make things easier for you too. It doesn't have to be an all-inclusive. There are other great resorts and accommodations where you're going to get the best of both worlds. As I mentioned, we usually book a resort with a kitchen and then do some research to find one to four allergy-friendly restaurants nearby. And that said, I have to be honest, there have been many times when I've researched a restaurant before leaving home, but have not felt comfortable with it once we arrived and talked to them. And safety is always our number one priority, especially on vacation, which means that we wouldn't eat at a restaurant if we didn't feel confident with their food allergy protocols. And this uncertainty means that vacations with food allergies might mean packing the right things, shopping for food, and cooking ourselves. And I know that people want a break from cooking on vacation, and they usually seek out an all-inclusive to get it. But I want you to know that it's possible to actually make the burden of finding and cooking allergy-safe foods streamline and easy so the person who cooks for the family can enjoy the vacation too. So to wrap this up, there is a lot at stake when it comes to finding the best allergy-friendly, all-inclusive resorts. But whether you go on all-inclusive or not, a safe and worry-free trip boils down to having the practical knowledge that you need. The thing about traveling with food allergies is that you don't know what you don't know. You may think that you're completely prepared and then something comes up that you never thought of and it can throw you off guard and make your trip way more worrisome than it has to be. You can get all the best travel tips and strategies in one place so you don't have to search all over the internet or worry that you're missing important steps for safety. You can get it in my food allergy travel workshop where I've packed with 16 years of practical knowledge after traveling to the Bahamas, Mexico, Spain, Ireland, the UK, Italy, France, and all over US and Canada. We've been lucky enough to experience several Disney vacations, including Disneyland, Disney World, and Paris Disney, road trips, as well as beach vacations, tours, a river cruise, and a Mediterranean cruise. So you can see this workshop includes all the essential travel planning and packing templates you're going to need for a safe and confident food allergy trip. And here's a hot tip. If you purchase the food allergy travel workshop, you can add on the dining out with food allergies workshop for over 50% off. Go to the link in the show notes to enroll now. Did this episode help you? Let me know. Send me a DM on Instagram at Friendly Pantry and tell me all about your food allergy travel plans. I can't wait to hear about it. Thanks for listening and bye for now. Before you go, Mama, if you love this episode and want deeper support, head over to FriendlyPantry.com to see how we can partner together to keep your food allergy child safer and worry less. There's no need for wasting time searching all over Instagram, TikTok, and the web to get the practical knowledge you need for your family. While you're there, grab your free Food Allergy Kids Empowerment Guide or the newly diagnosed checklist today.